Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for another beautiful day. Thank you, Jesus. A day to expect our miracles dropping, and they will surely drop. Amen. All right. With the joy of the Lord, we call on um, our sister, Dr. Ike Afolanyo from Nigeria to lead us in the opening prayer. Over to you now, Dr. Ike. Good morning, everybody. Good, Good morning. morning. Can you just um, take this few songs of worship? breath of life this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for the grace of sleeping and waking up this morning. Yes, Lord. Thank yes, you. Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Because throughout this week, he has been protecting us, guiding us, mm -hmm. leading us, even up to this moment. Thank mm -hmm. you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for our love, ones, for our friends, for our family. We are not hearing any bad news. We're not hearing any evil news. We're not hearing something that makes us be staying up in the hospital. For we glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We know we are sinners. We know we come short of your glory in one way or the other. Sometimes precious to us. Sometimes we are not aware of what we are doing. God, please forgive us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please, God, continue to lead us in the path that is right in your sight in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Lord, we have gathered today because we want to hear from you. We want to learn. We want to communicate. We want to know more. God, we pray that you will help us to obtain all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To help us that today's worship will impact our lives and help us to go closer and closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But Lord, for all those who are joining later, please God, give them strength, give them grace to join in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Help us that everybody that has attended this meeting today that their lives will change for the better because of this meeting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We bless the rest of our day. We bless the speaker. We bless everything that is going to happen. That you let the help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you. We thank you. Thank, thank you, Father. For thank you, Lord. Glorify your name. We thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ike Afolanyo from Nigeria. That was a very powerful one. God bless you. More anointing upon your life in the name of Jesus to so impart your generation for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I, I want you as an individual, pick a song in your heart and sing that song to the hearing of the Almighty God. At this junction, if your area is not noisy, you can unmute yourself and sing to the Lord a joyful song. Mm -hmm. 
In Jesus' name, we praise and worship. Amen. 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 This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battles. Give me love. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Yes. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm 
how Jesus is fighting our battle. Nothing is difficult. Thank you, Jesus. The captain of the hope. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you all the 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 Victory is power. Victory is yours. Victory is man. Victory is yours. Victory is man. Victory is ours. In the name of Jesus. Victory over the devil. Victory over the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is how we start our battle. We push. Pray until something happens. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
Thank you, Father. This is how we fight our battle. Terrible Santa Baba Santa Baba Santa. This is how we fight our battle. Victory is your victory is mine. Victory is ours. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is how we fight our battles because Jesus is there. He's the one leading. He's the one leading. He's the one fighting the battle for us. He has fought the battles. He's told us, he said, it is finished. It is finished. We're not fighting our battles from the point of a victim, but rather we are fighting our battles from the point of a victor, uh, 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 as a victor. Thank you, Jesus. And we are already winning. We are on the winning side. And you will win your battles in the name of Jesus. Every battles of life that have conf uh, confronted you, Every battle of life that has confronted you on this platform, on this platform, you are winning. Not you will win. I say you are winning. I am winning. And at the end of the day, we shall give glory to God. By this December, you are coming to testify. I am coming to testify in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus has gone ahead of us and is winning the battles for us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for that worship song. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we have had, so shall it be unto us in the name of Jesus. Once again, I want to say thank you very much for everyone that have logged in this morning, for us logging in from Nigeria and um, from Europe. I um, want to appreciate Damilola Udulaja for logging in. God bless you. God bless you. We appreciate you. Uh, we're not taking your presence for granted. God bless you. God bless you mightily. Hallelujah. And we want to uh, encourage you that we should keep coming and coming because the Lord has spoken well concerning us. On this platform, we will surely reach our goal. Hallelujah. Sister Deborah Smith from Canada, God bless you. Sister Emil Gogana Joy Alessa from um, Canada, God bless you. Uh, Sister Julie from Nigeria, God bless you. Sister Maureen from Nigeria, God bless you. Sister Pauline from Nigeria, God bless you. Pastor Pius Jeremiah from Ghana, God bless you. Sister Temi Praise, hallelujah. The mommy of Iremide, my, my, my goodness has come, my joy has come. All the way from California, God bless you. I think I saw a uh hand. I, I know I saw her. Bukola, hallelujah, from California. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. And also, Sister Jarad from Maryland, US. God bless you. You and your family. God bless you all. So, I want to appreciate everyone that logged in today. And I'm trusting God that the Lord God Almighty, as we are still on the series of We Push. You will push your you will push your way to your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We push, we push. And like I told us that we should put hashtag and uh, say it everywhere. We push, put it on the social media. We push, we push, we push, we push. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So once again. Someone just sent me a chat now that she cannot log in. Maybe that was a net, uh, that is a network at its end. God will have mercy on us on this network palaver. All right. I want to remind everyone of us. I want to remind us of our single prayer vigil coming up in the next few days. Um, for us, logging in from, uh, from Nigeria will be on the night. Then for us outside Nigeria, let's say from Canada or US, uh, on the 8th. So brethren, if you are here, you are single, or you are here, you have children that are of marriageable age, uh, I want you to come and represent your children. 
I to her, I will be here to represent my daughter because I want her to have a wonderful married life. Even I want her marriage to be better than, than, than mine. And that is what I also desire for everyone, you, the younger generation. Our desire is that your marriage will be far, far better and greater than the marriage of with the older, older generation. You, your marriage will be sweeter than ours. You will, have, you, you will enjoy it more than what we have enjoyed in the name of Jesus. So, brethren, come and come and see what the Lord has for you. Come and hear what the Lord has for you. If you have a daughter or a son, I appreciate that you come and represent that your daughter, that your son, you know, in, you know, in prayer. And by the grace of God, sister, in fact, we are going to listen to two testimonies of what the Lord did through this ministry, through this ministry, what the Lord do, did for this, our sisters. I've been telling us that no, this two sisters, sister Kemi, and uh, I told her that sister Kemi and uh, uh, sister Diola, that within three months, they got wedded. And that marriage is doing well. The two marriages are doing well. And they are coming to tell us how it, how it happened. And that's to tell you that for those who want to get married this year, it's still possible. Like one of them, it was in the month of October that year that the Lord brought our own Isaac. And by December, they got wedded. And the wedding is doing well, doing fine. They are at, uh, here, in, here in Nigeria. So another one again. Anyway, let me keep those testimonies so that you, you will hear from the horse's mouth. Uh, at the single and our sister from canada who is going to be our host she's coming by the grace of god she to have a powerful testimony how god changed her from a humble humble uh, state and today she can go anywhere in the world anywhere in the world and how did this happen she will tell us hallelujah so that we can learn from uh, from her and also pray our children into such an experience hallelujah let us invite as many people as possible, as many singles, let's invite them. Parents, let's invite them to come and, and, and log in. It's going to be three hours in God's presence. And as you do this to the younger generations, God also will also remember you and remember your own generation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now we want to go into our short ministration. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. This is another beautiful day, oh Lord. Holy Spirit, you are my senior partner. You are my master. You are my leader and my director. Holy Spirit, I hand over my vessel unto you that you speak through me in the name of Jesus, let the hearer and the speaker to be mightily blessed. I bring the speaker, bring your mouthpiece to be blessed. And those that will hear from me under your influence, they also will be blessed. So that at the, at the end of the day, we will come to testify. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. All right, before I go into the message, I have, the Lord has a message for someone. I don't want to forget. That's why, let me say that and we move on. Sister Cordelia, God bless you. I have a word for, from the Lord for you. When I was preparing for this, administration in the morning um i had i had it in my i had it the lord said i should tell you that there are two major events that you are going you are going to play a major role two major events that you are going to play a major role are on your way Two major events. 
And you are going to play a major role. I'm emphasizing that word, major. A major role. They are on your way. Very, very soon, they will manifest. And if you can pray very well, the Lord is seeing all that you are doing. He's seeing your prayer. And he said, if you can pray very well, one of them will manifest this year. And these two events are for your blessing. These two events are for your blessing. Two major events. They are for your blessing. Thank you, Father. And Glory this Christ. is, and this is the prayer point the Lord laid in my heart to give to you. And the Lord said that you should handle this prayer point like that we do in the book of Luke chapter 18, 1 to 8. Father Lord, let these two events that are meant for my upliftment manifest now in the name of Jesus. That's the prayer point. Very simple. Father Lord, let these two events, these two major events, they are major events, major, two major events that are meant for my upliftment, for my upliftment, manifest now in the name of Jesus. Father, so shall it be. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Yeah, I don't glory, want to forget. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. We shall talk about the details later. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Brethren, like I told us, we are we are in the we are in the season of God demonstrating His power. We are in that season. Thank you, Father. I'm continuing from where I stopped last week. We push part three, and I told us what we push is all about. We push. What does it mean? We pray until something happens. We pray until something happens. Please, can somebody help me to type we push on our Zoom dashboard? I want everybody to type it now. Just type it, we push, we push. Just begin to type it on our dashboard. I want to be saying it. Just type, we push, we push, we push. Everyone, we push. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. God bless you, Dr. Precious. I've seen yours, yes. Just type, we push, we push. Just begin to type. Just type, we push. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Brethren, what you have just done now, what we have just typed now, we push, is the why our God, the Holy Spirit, established this online platform, which we tagged or we called Online Revival Prayer Movement, ORPN, ORPN, or ORPF, Online Revival Prayer Fellowship. The Lord gave us a rema on the day of when we inaugurated this platform. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord gave us uh, the Erema. That was on the, on the 6th of November, 2018. That means that we did not start this online fellowship because of uh, COVID-19, no. The Lord knew that it's going to happen and we were well positioned. The Lord gave us Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17, which says, and I'm going to read it from New King James uh, Version. But upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. The house of Austin Ushi shall possess their possessions. Yeah. I believe I read it very, I read it co correctly. So upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. The house of Austin Ushi, I don't know how you are going to read your Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You read your own very well. The house of Austin Ushi shall possess their possessions. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brethren, if you see me praying like this, like the praying widow in Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Please don't blame me. My beloved Jesus, my brother Jesus, encouraged me to do so. Thank you, Jesus. In John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus said, And you shall know the truth, and the truth 
shall make you free. Say, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Brethren, kindly listen to me. Kindly listen to me. When we know the truth about something, that thing cannot harm you. I take it again. And that's a silent truth. When we know the truth, when you know the truth, I know the truth about something, that thing cannot harm us again. Do you know that when we know the truth about Elohim, we will enjoy him to the fullest. When we know him, when we know God the Father, when we know God the Son, Jesus Christ, when we know God the Holy Spirit, who is now physically present with us, although we cannot see him, because we are in the era of the Holy Spirit. There was a time that we were in the era of Jesus. Then the Father and, and the Holy Spirit, they were operating through him. But today, we are in the era of the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. And the Father and Jesus Christ, they are operating through him. Thank you, Father. So when we know uh, Elohim, we will definitely enjoy him to the fullest. Also, let me also put it this way. When you know the truth about Satan and his cohorts, when I know the truth about Satan and his cohorts, you and I will no more be under his influence. We will no more be under his control. And that is the truth. Rather, you will be his controller. You will be his master. I will be his controller. I will be his master. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Brethren, God does not want us to remain at, at a level. You know, our spiritual journey can be likened to a student who enrolls, who get admission into university. You will agree with me that that student who gained admission to university, the first degree is, uh, we'll call it either BA or B, whatever. The second degree is MSc. You know, the third degree is PhD. And that is the highest degree. I don't know if there's any other one you can apart from uh, PhD. As it is in that educational, uh, uh, at, uh, as it is with university education, so also it is with our spiritual, in our, it is with our spiritual journey. When we are born again, that's the first degree. We get first degree which we call born again. But the Holy Spirit doesn't want us to remain there. He says, move on. Move on and get MSc. And what is MSc? Master over situations and circumstances. Master over situations and circumstances. And then they will say, don't stop there. Move on to the highest peak. Go to a PhD. Get your PhD. Get your PhD. I don't mean PhD in academics. I mean PhD you know, in your spiritual journey. And what is PhD? Power over the host of demons. Brethren, when you have this PhD, rest assured, <laughs> you are now an authority. When you speak, devil cannot stand. When you go on your knees, say, Father, the devil looks at you and he will flee. Thank you, Jesus. When you and I be, begin to know the truth about Satan and about his kingdom, they will begin to tremble before us. In the last two series, I told us that one of the secrets the devil doesn't want us to know about him and about his kingdom is that they cannot stand the prayer of a righteous or of an upright man. They can't stand it. It's a secret. It's a secret. And the devil doesn't want us to know it. And that is why the devil will do everything possible to ensure that Christians live in sin. They, they are doubly with sin. Because he knows that once there is sin in the life of that Christian, his prayer is just an empty barrel. His prayer cannot move anything. 
He knows that his prayer can never move anything. He will allow us to, 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 to indulge in worry and anxiety. He will allow us to, to indulge in unbelief in, in doubt. He knows that those, 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 uh, those things, those traces in our life, they are there to weaken the potency of our prayer. He will allow us to compromise our Christian, our, uh, Christian stand. He will allow us to be righteous. Because I told us the, the meaning of upright. Because the Bible says that the prayer of the upright, Proverbs 15, verse 8, he said the prayer of the upright is God's delight. Devil, devil also he knows that. And I told us that in, the, uh, uh, in, in Hebrew, the word upright means straight. Straight. When you bend, when you bend, you are no more straight, you are no more upright. And the devil wants us to be bending. Bending. And what is bending? Compromise. Compromising your spiritual life. Can you imagine someone who calls himself or herself born again? He's still dabbling with things that are evil. And he says that he's born again. A man who claimed to be born again is still having things to do with occultic practices. How can that man receive anything from the Lord? One leg in, one leg out. One leg in Christ, one leg in occultic practices. You can't forget it. That being in that occult, in that occult cannot earn you access to God. You can't make it. I'm not cursing you. I'm just telling you the truth. It is the devil that will deceive you. Say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We are all doing the same. We are all happy the same God. It's a lie. It's a pure lie. Brethren, open your Bible with me to Luke chapter 18, verses 1 and 8, which is our working scripture. Thank you, Jesus. We want to learn, we want to read the story of, of this widow that applied the principle of push, pray until something happens. I want to draw out some few lessons. Luke chapter 18. 18, 1 to 8. And I'm going to read it from King James, uh, yeah, from New King James Version. I'm reading from New King James Version. I will read. Then he, Jesus, spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a city, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get, Jesus, get justice for me. Get justice for me from my adversary. And he will not for a while, but after all, he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Brethren, I want us to learn few lessons from the story of this widow. And here in, uh, uh, on my note, I have about six points that we can learn from the story of this uh, widow. Number one lesson is this. The widow focused on her need and not her want. He focused on her need. And what was her need? We can see it in verse 3, which is her prayer point. He said, get justice for me from my adversary. Kim James, uh, Kim James Version put his, uh, puts it this way. Avenge me of my adversary. Now, look at the word justice. Her need was justice. She needed justice. And you, you, will, you will agree with me that when I read from other translation, it gave us uh, uh, insight to the kind of justice this widow was 
requesting from this unjust judge. Her prayer request was in twofold. Number one, restore my inheritance unto me. My inheritance that my enemies took from me. Maybe a household enemy when her husband died. She was demanding for restoration of her inheritance. And number two, the second fold of that her request was protection from her enemies. So she knew what she wanted and she focused on her need. That is the first lesson I learned from that story. The second lesson that I also learned was that this widow had strong faith in the ungodly judge. Look at that verse three. He said, she came to him and in verse four, the unjust, the ungodly judge said, he will not for a while, which tells me that this woman never got uh, fed up. He kept, she kept on going. Now, we did not know how, uh, how many days because that for a while meant that it was not that day. It was not the first day that she, uh, she, got to, to, she got the attention of the ungodly judge that the ungodly judge granted her request. No. Whether it was 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, Jesus did not give us that detail. But what all we knew was that it was more than one day. Hallelujah. Now, what kept her going? What kept her going? What made her to continually going to get that mass attention? It was her strong faith in, in the ungodly judge. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. She saw this ungodly judge to be a solution provider. She saw him that this man is able or was able to solve her problem. And she, and she was determined. That is another lesson. She was focused and determined to get her request granted. She refused to accept no for an answer. She refused to, to, to accept no for an answer. She kept on going. She was not discouraged. She was focused and determined. Number four lesson that we can learn from the story of this woman who applied this principle of push, pray until something happened. She had access to the ungodly judge. If you look at verse three again, he said, and she came to him. Now, we don't know whether was it in his office or whether in his residential house, we don't know. We don't know what time of the day, but this man was so smart and wise that she knew when to get the ungodly judge. She knew when to go. Uh, she knew when to get his attention. She knew the time, and she knew where. So she had access to the ungodly judge. Thank you, Jesus. I believe we are picking one or two lessons. Thank you, Father. Now, the question we're going to ask ourselves is this. How was she able to get access to the ungodly judge? Do not forget that Jesus told us that this man is not just an ordinary man. This man happened to be a powerful man in the society, in the city. This man happened to be a judge, which I believe everybody feared. Because we're told that this man, he, he, he does not even fear God. 
talk less of human being. He doesn't fear God. He doesn't fear any man. So you can tell how powerful this man is in the, in the city. And we don't know how close this woman is to uh, the, the to, to this uh, judge. We don't know whether the distance where she is living uh, and, and the, that man, whether close or far away. But anyway, how she always get to that man's house or office, I don't know. Jesus didn't give us that detail. So what made this woman that helped her to get or to gain access to the ungodly judge? One thing. She had the right attitude. She had the right attitude. And like they always say, that attitude is 100%. Attitude is everything. And that's the truth. She had the right attitude when approaching the ungodly judge. Even when the ungodly judge was refusing her, her request, not giving her what she wanted, she never murmured in her presence. She never grumbled in her presence. She was not impolite. She was not rude in the presence of the ungodly judge. Maybe she went the first time and the ungodly judge just sent her away. The second time she went again, the third time she went again. As she was going, she never, she, you can see, because, okay, brethren, let's look, let's look at it this way. Suppose she now went after about three or four times and she now went and she began to abuse the ungodly judge. Of course, you will agree with me that. Remember, the ungodly judge never feared man nor feared God. That ungodly man, that man will send, will send, will send her to jail. Because she, uh, she had, uh, the ungodly judge had no mercy. He will send her to jail. But you will see that each time, or each day, or each time, this woman will approach him. This woman always gained access to him. It's because the, this woman had the right attitude. Brethren, let me ask you a question. What kind of attitude do you put up in God's presence? Just because you pray today and the answer does not come. What's the next thing? You feel dejected. You begin to murmur and grumble. You begin to accuse God. Just like the children of Israel, they were accusing God through uh, Moses. Brethren, you can see why our prayers are not being effective. If this widow could not do that before the un unjust or, or uh, before a godless judge who fear no man nor regard uh, who fear no god nor regard man who has his breath in his nostril if this man could put up a, 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 the right attitude respecting and giving honor to this man knowing fully well that this man has is, is the answer to my is the solution to my need How much more the Almighty God, the Judge of all judges, the Creator of the universe, you and I will not begin to grumble and murmur in His presence. That's why many times God will just ignore us. So get out. I pray that that we will learn this great lesson. If there's any, if there's nothing you you learn, please learn this 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 lesson. Have the right attitude before God. Even when, even if the answer has not come, have the right attitude. Why are you suppose this woman, maybe the uh, she gets there and the man said, "Wait, I'm coming," and the woman began, uh, be, uh, and, and, and the woman begin to to worry and answer. He would just send him. He would just send her away. He say, "Get out." You know. Hmm. Number five lesson, 
this woman did not mind the price, the sacrifice, to get her request granted. She did not mind. She, she paid that price. I don't know the distance, like I said, but she did not mind. Maybe to get that man, the unjust judge, the, in, she, she knew that by 8 o'clock, that man will leave the house. Before 8, she has arrived. And when the woman will just open the gate, lo and behold, it is a, man, it is a woman. And the woman will respect. Oh, my Lord, I'm here. I know you can help me. You are the only one that can help me. My Lord, I believe in you. I know you have the power to help me. You have to help me. You have to help me. Abba. And the man said, hmm, this woman will weary me to death if I do not answer. Because the, the woman said, even though I'm so wicked, and yet this woman still respect me, still give me all this, rever all this reverence. She did, number six point, she, she disregarded the humiliation of several rejections. She disregarded it. And this reminds me of the story of a woman in Matthew chapter 15, verse 26 to 27. Matthew 15, 26 to 27. Who came to Jesus Christ crying? Asking for mercy over her daughter that was being attacked by the, uh, by demons, and J Jesus did not answer. She began to cry, and the disciples said, "Jesus, send that woman away. She's he, she's disturbing us." Later, this woman was able to get the attention of Jesus. What was the first statement that Jesus made? Jesus said, hmm, "Woman, I'm sorry. It is not proper for me to give." What you are asking, the food meant for the children and give it to, to dog. Jesus was calling her a dog. Suppose today, what would you have said? You would say, uh -uh. but they said that this Jesus is a righteous man. This Jesus is a is a, a, is a, is a savior. I saw him, him performing miracles and all that. But look at see what he's, he's calling me a dog. I don't think this man is, 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 he has love. He has no compassion. He's a wicked man. Is that not what you say? But what did this woman say? This woman also disregarded the humiliation. He said, Jesus, I know. Yes, I know I'm a dog. But don't forget that even though the dog doesn't have access to the main food, but the ones that fall to the ground, the crumbs, that one, he will get, if that the crumb, I don't mind, please give me the crumb. And Jesus, look at, look at the right attitude. That was the right attitude. She never accused Jesus. She never insulted Jesus like some of us would do. When you are grumbling before God, you are insulting God. When you are worried and, and feel of anxiety, I say, it doesn't matter. I, I don't care. I will do anything what I want to do. Eh, eh, blah, blah, blah. After I've been waiting for all these years, nothing happened. Yeah, look at me for five years now. Eh, eh, eh. Does, it, does God want me to die? I, 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 let me to die. I'll be stupid. I've said that. But thank God, God has forgiven me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do, Jesus told this woman, say, ah, this is a strong faith. Say, now, yeah. And the woman got her miracle. You will get your miracle. Carry about Santa, Laba Santa. I said, you will get your own miracle. Don't give up. Don't give up. This widow, this widow push, and she got it. She prayed until something happened. She, she prayed until something happened. Brethren, when we talk about push, push is a prayer of persistence. Push is a kind of prayer that never gives up. And God always honors such prayers. Look at Elijah. In James chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, we are told that, that the prayer of a righteous man availed much. It's powerful. The prayer of a righteous man. And we are told that that that, okay, let me quote it correctly. The fervent prayer of a righteous man. For the fact that you are righteous does not mean that you pray now and God will answer you. Sometimes there might be a delay. So what makes your prayer to be fervent? That's when you persist. That's what we call the fervent prayer 
of a righteous man. When you are persisting, that prayer is fervent. That's what makes the prayer to be fervent. You refuse a no for an answer. You know, thank you, Jesus. And a righteous man who is fervent in his prayer, who is persistent in, in his prayer, who applied this op uh, operation push, knows that delay does not mean denial. He or she knows it. He knows that delay does not mean a denial. The fact that his prayer is being delayed, he knows that it does not mean God has denied him or her of his, uh, uh, of his answer to his prayers. Brethren, you are going to pray. I told us, I told us that that was last week, that pick a need and pray. Pray, continue to pray on that need. Today, let me ask you, has God answered you? Have you received an answer from the Lord? If you have, if you have not received, don't give up. Don't give up. First of all, check your life. Are you living in sin? If you are living in sin, check that area. Remove that sin. Sharp, sharp, remove, remove that sin. Check your, your life. Are you having anxiety? Remove it. After checking your life, you know that you are straight. You're not bending. Then persist. Keep on pushing. Keep on push. 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 I'm telling you, answer will come. Clearly about Santa, about Santa, and Santa. Brethren, we are going to pray. Don't stop yet. Don't say because you pray for seven days, nothing happened. Remember Elijah? He was a righteous man. God gave me a word that Elijah, I'm sending the rain. But how many times did he pray? Seven times. I'm going to look how he prayed. See the, see the position he took. Very uncomfortable. And he prayed. He prayed. He prayed. He said, go again, my servant. Go and check. He said, oh, God, nothing happened. He prayed again. Don't forget, God told him that, that he will send the rain. He had a promise. So you too, you have a promise. That is why you should persist. And let me give you a secret now. It was a prophet, one prophet that gave me and my wife this secret, which most Christ, many, some Christians don't know about the devil. I'll give you another secret. When God gives you a word, I am telling you, the host of hell will come against that word. They will make it difficult for that word to come to pass. And that is why some Christians, when they receive a word from the Lord, instead of them, to, that is when they should start real prayer, they will go and relax. They will confess him. Yes, God has given me a word. Yeah, it's good to confess. It's good. <laughs> but only mere confession. Without engaging that word in prayer, forget it. You, you, you just be confessing and confessing and confessing and confessing, nothing will happen. The devil will block it. Why is it that, that bad dreams quickly happen, quickly manifest, and good dreams struggle to manifest? This is a secret. The devil will make sure that the bad dreams, he will push it, he will push the bad dream to manifest fast. But the good one, he will resist it. He will resist it. That's a secret. And that is why we need to pray. And that was what happened to Elijah. He said, no, God told me. I'm sure God told me. He persisted until the seventh time. When he came back, he said, I saw, but anyway, I saw a little cloud like a man's hand. He said, that's okay. That's the answer. Brethren, you to pray to that point until God gives you a sign. You see that sign, say yes. Answer has come. Are we ready? We are going to pray now. Because I'm going to round off now. We are going to pray. Lord, what that same prayer that we pray last week, we are going to pray it. And then we'll close up. Lord, whatever in my life that is weakening the potency of my prayer. Lord, 
this day, remove it. From today, when I open my mouth to pray, devil must flee. The kingdom of hell must shake. The kingdom of darkness must shake. I heard of a testimony of a particular man of God. This, dem, this demon possessed man, people have been, some brethren have been trying to cast out that demon, but they could not. The moment this evangelist just got there, he just went to whisper to that demon possessed man. He said, hey, this is evangelist so and so. And that demon flee. Ah! When, I, when I heard that, I said, wow, this is power. This is power. That's what I'm talking about. Just mention it. You say, hey, this is Brother Austin. Eh? He has come. That guy that torments me. Oh, yeah. I hands off. I'm going. That is power. That is power. He hasn't prayed, though. Just mention, say, this is evangelist so and so. That demon flee. Say, I can't stand this guy's prayer. That was the meaning. Say, I can't stand. If it starts now, I, I'm in soup. Brother, you are going to pray. Hey, Bob, something up. Enough of all this timidity in prayer. Enough of being powerless in prayer. Lord, remove anything in my life that is weakening the potency of my prayer. Lord, remove it now. Lord, remove it now. I begin to pray. Unmute yourself I begin to pray. Unmute yourself I begin to pray. Because we're about to round off now. Unmute yourself. I, I have unmuted you at my end. You unmute yourself right now. Precious, unmute everybody. Begin to pray right now. Lord, whatever it is that is weakening my prayer life, that is weakening the potency of my prayer, oh my day, my my that I will pray and the devil will not shake, and that I will pray the king of darkness. They are not shaking. Ah, my Lord. Father, I will say to you, Korea, I will say to you, Korea. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Brethren, don't give up on God. And don't give in to that your situation. For the fact that you have not gotten pregnant for the past six, six seven, or eight years does not mean that you will not get pregnant this year. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Three of us went to camp just this last weekend. Three of us went to camp, went to redeem. And, we, and the Lord helped us to pray. In less than 25 hours, uh, one of us just called me. I began to share the testimony. Mm. You know, you look at that. In less than 24 hours. Thank you, Brethren, God answers prayers. Yes. Don't tell me, look, nothing can defy prayer. If you know what it is to pray, brethren, oh my God, you will enjoy prayer. You Look, I enjoy prayer. You will enjoy to pray. It's because you don't know, you don't know, because you, you've not gotten the secret. Now you're getting the secret. I, I don't get tired in praying. If I, if they say, oh yeah, oh yeah, again, and I can't, I'm, I'm, I am ready. Thank you, Jesus, because I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's not comfortable, but I'm enjoying it. Because I know that, that that is a weapon that the devil is not, he doesn't, he cannot stand it. And I'm ready to give it to him. Like I told, I said, I'm, I'm ready to wear out the devil out of my life, out of my way. I will, I will wear him out, out of my way. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, because I must get to my goal. I must get to my destination. I must, get, I must enjoy what God has destined for me to enjoy here, here, here in this life. Thank you, Father. We're going to pray one more time. Lord, make my prayer life potent from today. 
Make my prayer life potent, Lord. I want my prayer life to be, to be potent. No more being weak in 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 the in my uh, 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 in the place of prayer. No more being weak in. Lord, Rebo saint tena papa ya den asoto. O gya tena pa look ya den asete. Le kwe tena papa. Le kuri ya tena sete na papa ya de. O yene ne kote na papa look ya. O le kya tena kuri ya musondo. O le kete tena papa ya den asodo. O gya tena kuri ya musondo. O le le kote na puado. A le le kote ne kuri ya musondo. O gya tena kuri ya musondo. A le le kote na kuri ya musondo. O gya tena kuedo. A le le kote enu kuri ya bas. Sentena kuria, ogia tena kuria, monsanto ne kuria bosete. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, we say thank you. Yes, Lord God Almighty, forgive us of our prayerlessness. Lord God Almighty, have mercy on us, O Lord, for being prayerless. Father, have mercy on us for allowing the devil to introduce sin into our life, to weaken our prayer life. Have mercy on us, O Lord, to have allowed the enemy to introduce worry and anxiety into us, to use this to weaken the potency of our prayer. Father, today, Lord, look at this widow. See how she did it. We have seen it. Lord, we pray, Father, that in your presence, we will no more begin to exhibit worry and anxiety in your presence. Lord, in your presence, we will no more be exhibiting grumbling and complaining and murmuring in, in the name of Jesus. If this woman could not do that in the presence of the ungodly judge, why should we do that before you, the Almighty, the judge of the whole earth? And the judge of the whole earth will always do right. Ah, if this godless judge could do right, how much more the godly God, God himself, the creator of the universe, the monarch of the universe, the governor of, of all nations, how much more Elohim himself, Yahweh, who says that I am that I am, I will be who I will be. What can he not do? God that has no ending. He said, I am. You, can't, you cannot put an end on me. I have no ending. Father, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Never to give up on you in whatever situation we find ourselves. Lord, for those that are yet to get married, Father, I pray, my Lord, Baba, that this will challenge them to hold on to you and not to compromise their Christian life and begin to double into fornication, into immorality. They will stand and say that whatever it is my God will see me through. And for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, they won't go and begin to consult evil, consult evil powers in order to get pregnant. They will stand on you, believing that the Lord whom I whom I believe will shall bring it, will shall bring it to pass. Father, I pray, Lord, whatever is that need. Whoever is standing on our way, Father, clear them out of our way, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, whoever it is, O oh Lord, they want to stand as a Goliath, saying that we will not move, that we will not move to our next level. Father, remove them so that we will get us to our next level. In the name of Jesus, remove them. He remove them. All the all repentant sinners, all repentant unbelievers, they don't want to repent. Father, clear them out of our way now, now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, Father, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Yes. Baba, we say thank you. Dolo, we say thank you. Father, everyone at the sound of my voice, you know their need, Lord. You know their need. Father, I pray, Lord, as they have mentioned their need before you, let that need be granted. Let Amen. that need be granted. Let Amen. that need be granted. Let that need be granted. In the name of Jesus, whatever it is, as long as they are saying amen, Father, that need is granted. As long as they are saying amen, that need is granted. As long as they are saying amen, that need is granted. In the name of Jesus. And they are coming to testify. They are coming to testify in the name of Jesus. Because there is no need that you cannot meet. That need does not exist. You meet, he said, my God shall supply all our needs 
all our, not some, not few, all, 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 Father in heaven. You said that, that, that this righteous man cried, and you deliver him from you, you, you answer him, you, 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 you had him and deliver him from all his trouble. That is you, not some, not, not few, but all his trouble, all our troubles that we have brought before you today, Father. All the troubles you will deliver us from them all in the name of Jesus, Amen. Father. We say thank you, thank you, Lord. Lord I pray that this spirit of prayer and supplication. This revi Lord, revive our spiritual life, Lord. Mm -hmm. Revive our altar, our place of, revive our altar, Lord. Our prayer, prayer altar, Lord, revive it from today, Lord. Make our prayer life potent, potent, Amen. potent Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for our single vigil coming up, oh Lord, in the next few days. We pray that everyone that has not yet got connected to their, to their spouse, Father, this year, they will get connected to their spouse in the name of Jesus. Amen. They will get connected to their spouse in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever is the hindrance, that hindrance will clear it out of their way in the name of Jesus. Those Amen. that are ready for marriage, those that are prepared for marriage and they are ready and they want to get married now. Lord, this year, they are getting connected to their spouse. In the name of Jesus, they are mm. taking delivery of their spouse. They are taking delivery of their spouse because we are still in the ninth month. This ninth month, they are taking delivery of their spouse. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, King. Of in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. All right. We God bless you all. For logging in, we want to appreciate Ade Peba Moji. God bless you for logging in. And also Damilola Odulaja, God bless you. In case you need my attention, you, you, you can chat me up. I think you can chat me up and then we chat. Um, I want to uh, appreciate everyone of us. Let's endeavor to invite people. Today we're very low in attendance. I don't know why. Uh, maybe like someone said that she, she couldn't log in network okay maybe that was what affected others too okay praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus you are blessed in the name of jesus amen on this platform you will reach your goal amen i will i will reach my goal in the amen. name of jesus amen. all right let us share the grace don't forget next week we are going to focus on uh, 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 we are going to enter October, the 10th month. The 10th month, God has something great for us. We are going to focus on the love of God next month. We are focusing on the love of God. I'm telling you, on this platform, hmm, things are beginning to happen. And don't let us forget our November, our November program with uh, Pastor Shua Mimo. But it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be great. And those who, those who promised to bless her with a token, we have, I think someone gave us 20,000 20, 20, 20, 20, So we are still expecting more. We are, our target is 100,000 Naira, 100,000. And I think it's possible for us to achieve 100,000. Last year, we achieved close to 100,000. I think it was 90,000 Naira. This year, I'm believing God. From 90, we shall move to 100,000 Naira. It's just to bless her with that. I believe God has used her for us mightily. And I'm trusting God that as we give our, cool of, our cup of cold water to her, we are tapping that prophetic anointing from, from her into our life. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Holy goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Three powerful hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You will surely reach your goal. You will surely reach your goal. You will surely reach your goal. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.